We are envisioning a museum that uses Pluto's new categorization as a means to explore and understand space. We have designed one exhibit that this museum might hold, a physical and sensory journey through the solar system. We observed a great deal about the design of exhibits and how people interact with them. We compiled a short list of common themes to keep in mind as we designed them. Exhibits must work. Museum exhibits that fall into disrepair don't get used, and therefore they should be designed to be as sustainable as possible. Small actions should result in big results. One of the most compelling exhibits we noticed enabled the user to understand the viscosity of liquids by sending bubbles through eight different tubes with the press of a button. Replace the abstract with something physical. The viscosity exhibit also provided another insight by replacing the abstract concept of viscosity with physical tubes holding different liquids. The disability I was uh, experiencing was one on person and so I started with uh, unpacking things from my, lap, from my bag and the first thing was my laptop and uh, evidently I was trying too hard to open my laptop in the sense of the time and the frustration I was I had this jacket is normally assigned with two arms and the other arm was not getting around. Going back, uh, we had a short assignment of tying my laces back. I thought of reading a newspaper, having a single arm. Uh, I just thought of flipping pages would be a little problematic. So my disability was dyslexia. Um, basically, we simulated this by having a document that had um, some of the words were jumbled up um, with different letters and all of the D's were replaced with B's. It has dyslexia, tries to hide it or mask it from society. They are afraid of what might happen. Uh, and, and there were many words that I actually got wrong, which uh, left me frustrated and confused, and, and um, it, it made it hard to continue reading in front of even peers. Okay, um, so for my disability experience, uh, what James ended up concocting for me was to do a Photoshop tutorial uh, that I would read uh, while at the same time listening to a separate tutorial going on in my ear at the same time. If I got distracted, um, if uh, James would try to talk to me while this was going on and I'm, I'm trying to focus on what I'm reading and, and hearing this uh, the other tutorial in my ear, Varun talks to me, I get an instant message. Uh, we identified several common threads to understanding accessible design. People are naturally adaptable. There's no need to include lots of extra accessibility features. These are both unnecessary and possibly insulting. Persons with disabilities may be more aware of their public presence. The design should never call attention to these disabilities or make anyone feel any different. Text should be minimal in usage and simple in nature. This will make the design more accessible for not only persons with cognitive and vision disabilities, but also for children. Persons with disabilities experience things differently. What this tells us is that there should be multiple levels of sensory and cognitive access to the design. Moving on past our research and into our concept, we wanted to focus on creating an immersive environment. At first we took inspiration from scenes in the movie What Dreams May Come, where the main character experiences a painting from the inside. We became curious about how being physically immersed in an abstract idea could be applied to other topics. We wanted an overall theme for the museum our interaction would be in, and we decided upon the theme of why is Pluto not a planet? Some of these concepts included a large room where museum goers could walk along celestial paths, an activity where patrons could map solar system distances to familiar distances, a ride that takes a space shuttle journey throughout the solar system, a vertical or inclined physical exhibit to convey distance, and experiencing the different environments on different planets. For our exhibit, we wanted to focus on helping museum goers understand the relative distances of the planets from the sun and between each other. With such massive distances in space, we felt that it's not enough to just see or hear them, but to feel them. The challenge for us became, how can we make someone feel the structure of the solar system? The concept we chose to go with uses a long hallway as a metaphor for the structure of the solar system. In this hallway, museum goers can take a journey through space feeling the distance through physically moving through our solar system and viewing it from two very different perspectives. The initial perspective is from the inner planets, whose relationships to each other are that of a close-knit family, where distances are relatively close, the environment is warm and bright, and the farthest object can barely even be seen. We use astronomical units, the standard unit of measure in the solar system, to help patrons conceptualize their progress. Upon reaching the outer planets, where the relationships between them are more like that of distant cousins, 
the space is much more vast, and patrons must walk a substantial distance between the planets, especially compared to the inner planets. The hallway will be much darker and cooler compared to the beginning, and when the patron reaches the end of the hallway and looks back, he or she will be able to see the entire journey from the outer planet perspective. For our first prototype, we used a dark, non-linear hallway, using glow-in-the-dark planets and a narrator. We passed it, we end up at Earth. Can you guess how many AU Earth is? One. Exactly. All right, we understand AU. The vastness was conveyed well, especially through the use of temperature and darkness. And also, the overall concept of AU was understood by Benaibi. What didn't work? The narration was distracting and did not allow for exploration. There was no information about the planets, so there was no payoff upon reaching them. The prototype's big limitation was that it was not in a straight line. The feeling of distance was diluted because Benaibi was able to perceive where she was in the building. We addressed some of these shortcomings in our second prototype. To isolate the experience of distance, we tried the same interaction again but in a field. In our first prototype, darkness helped to convey the feeling of vastness. In our second prototype, the wide open nature of the field helped to convey this. We confined Burr and Schwinn to the running path to mimic the space in the hallway, and also tried to incorporate some information about each of the planets along the journey. What worked? Distance was felt. Schwinn and Burr both had insights about distance and felt that they had gained a new understanding. They were anticipating their arrival at the next planet. They even started trying to guess how far the next planet was. What didn't work? One of the limitations of this prototype was that the information was moving along with them at all times. Although appreciated, this information was largely ignored and still seemed to be like a narration of sorts. There was still no payoff upon reaching the planet other than discovering the astronomical units. We must be careful not to make the inner planet seem less significant due to the small amount of time spent walking between them. At this point in our process, we've come up with several future directions we might want to explore. First would be the exploration of how acoustics could add to the experience. Perhaps the walls could be constructed so that sounds for the inner planets would be warmer and livelier, and the outer planets would have duller and colder sounds. We would like to include a lighted path like you would see in the movie theater that could provide guidance in the darkness. We would also like to include a dual purpose handrail along the wall. This could be used for support and guidance, as well as have the astronomical unit markings on it lit up softly. These could also be written in braille. We would like to explore how the planets could be represented, perhaps with different sizes and textures. For instance, if someone could hold Mercury in their hand, then they might need to hug Jupiter. We also need to consider deliberate design of the texts. Perhaps information on the wall on the way to the farther planets could be drawn out one sentence at a time. This might coincide nicely with distance walked, 